Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Esty and this channel is all about my pre-nursing and nursing journey as a wife and as a mom. So if you're interested in that type of content, you can definitely go and subscribe to my channel below. I would love to have you guys on here for this journey. But today I'm going to be sharing with you how I'm studying for anatomy and physiology one. I'm halfway through the course right now. I just passed my midterms and I'm currently getting an A in the class. So fingers crossed that that will continue through the rest of the semester. But I have found some kind of tips and tricks along the way that have worked for me. And I wanted to come on here and share it with you guys because I know a lot of you are also in pre-nursing and I thought that this might be helpful for some of you as well. If any of you guys are currently taking anatomy and physiology or you will be taking it soon, go ahead and drop a comment below and let me know. You can let me know any things that have been working for you for studying and I would love to hear from you guys on that as well. All right, so the first thing that has really helped me with studying for anatomy and physiology is just identifying my learning style and what works best for me. Each person is going to be a little bit different on this, so I think it's very helpful to identify how you learn best so that you can focus your studying in that way. Personally, I've found that I am a very visual learner, so since I've learned that about my learning style, I've tried to kind of gear my study habits as much as I can to help me study in the way that I learn best. So for example, I have been using YouTube videos as a way to supplement what I'm learning and there are some amazing channels out there that have really, really helped me to understand concepts that I'm learning in anatomy and physiology a little bit better. And it has also helped me to retain some of those concepts more than when I'm just reading from my anatomy and physiology textbook or just listening to a lecture. And some of these you guys already might be familiar with, but they have just been so helpful to me. So if you have not heard of them, definitely go and check them out. The first one is Crash Course. Crash Course has some great videos that are extremely in depth. They go really into all the different concepts and describe everything really well. What I also love is they have visualizations of what is happening. And a lot of times, even on like a cellular level, they'll have a video of how something is functioning and how it works. Having those elements really helps me to internalize the information that I'm getting and it really helps me to learn a lot better. So I have been using Crash Course a lot. The second channel that I love is Khan Academy. Khan Academy, which you guys probably also are familiar with, they just have some great videos and you can go onto their website and find videos and then on YouTube, you can also just type in Khan Academy and you'll find a lot of videos for anatomy and physiology and biology concepts. So that has been helpful for me as well. Another channel which I highly recommend is registerednursern.com. They also have a website and then they also have a YouTube channel. So I have been using a lot of their anatomy and physiology videos. They have, again, just some really engaging ways of presenting information and they offer a lot of really cool tricks for remembering concepts. So for example, they have some songs that can help you remember anatomy and physiology concepts or they give you mnemonics that help you remember certain terms. And so to me, again, that's just an extremely helpful resource to memorize concepts and remember concepts in anatomy and physiology. Because as you guys know, if you're in a &P right now, there's just a lot of information that you have to remember. All of these extra tricks and resources, I personally feel are very helpful. In terms of other YouTube channels or videos that are helpful, sometimes if I have a particular concept that I'm struggling with understanding, I will just open up YouTube and just type in what it is that I need to understand. So for example, if I want to learn a little bit more about how bone formation happens, I could just type into the search bar bone formation. And a lot of times those top videos that come up at the top of your search are super helpful to understand a little bit better about those concepts that you're struggling with. My second tip is to pace yourself in your studies. So with anatomy and physiology, there is a ton of information coming at you and there's a lot that you have to learn very quickly. It's easy to get overwhelmed with the load of information and you probably you know, have lecture, you have your lab portion, you have textbook, you have all this stuff that you're trying to keep track of and so what I have found helpful is to pace myself and to do a little bit of lecture and then do a little bit of homework and then do a little bit of textbook reading and try to switch it up so that I'm not getting too bogged down with just one way of learning 
for too long. Because if I sit down and I try to read a full chapter in one sitting, for example, these chapters are just massive and have so much information. And so after a certain point, I tend to lose focus and I realize I'm not even registering what I'm reading anymore. So I've tried to pace myself so that I don't get too overwhelmed with one thing or one way of learning. So third tip is to use the resources that your prof has given to you in your class to learn as much as possible and also to see if there are ways that you can use what you've been given to leverage your grades. So what I mean by that is that sometimes, well a lot of times, your professor is giving you the information that you need specifically for the tests that he or she is going to give to you. And once you've taken the first test in your class, you usually can have a good idea of kind of how your professor works, what type of questions are gonna show up in the test, and that can help guide your studies so that you can use those resources that the professor has given you in the best way possible. So for example, my professor in our class has a few different elements that he's given to us to help us study for the class. So the first thing that we have is we have lectures. So he has pre-recorded online lectures that we listen to. And then our homework assignments are like these handouts, these usually like three pages to six pages that ask us a bunch of questions related to the lectures that we are watching. And then we're supposed to handwrite our answers to these questions. So it's honestly a lot of work. It's what I spend probably the majority of my study time on is just handwriting these printouts. But what I learned after taking my first test is that my professor primarily took questions based off of these homework assignments that we'd done. So once I realized that, I have really focused my um, effort on those homework assignments because I know that that work will pay off. And so I will create those homework assignments, I'll handwrite them, and then I'll go back to those handouts and I'll make flashcards on any of those concepts that I think are really important. And so that way I can just study and study and restudy those concepts until I feel really confident with them. And that has really helped me with my test taking because I know that a lot of that information is going to show up on the test. So I really feel that identifying kind of what is most important to your professor is really key and knowing what your professor is going to test. I mean, obviously you're not gonna know exact questions that they're going to ask you, but after taking your first test, you should have a good idea of what type of questions you're gonna see and what type of content your professor usually tends to choose for the test, and that can help guide your studies as well. So I mentioned a little bit ago that I have been making flashcards from my homework assignments so that I can just study and restudy information. And I wanted to share with you guys the app that I've been using for flashcards because I have just loved it so much. It's been super helpful to me. I also used it when I was getting ready for my nursing entrance exams. This app is called Anki, and if you haven't heard of it, I would definitely go and check it out. It is a free app if you're using it on your desktop, and then I believe it's like a $15 charge for the app if you're using it on your mobile device. So what's really neat about Anki is that it is a spaced repetition app. So what that basically means is that depending on how you do on a particular flashcard, Anki will review the flashcard more frequently if you're not as confident in the concept, and then it will review it a little bit less frequently if you're super confident with it. So it's a pretty cool feature. You can create your own flashcards on Anki or you can download other people's flashcard packs and there's a lot of different flashcards that you can find online. So today I'm going to share with you the flashcards that I have been creating throughout my Anatomy and Physiology 1 class. And I'm going to put the link down in the description box below so you guys can access it there. So I'll put all of the flashcards that I've created into that folder so far. And then as the semester goes on, I'll just keep on adding any other flashcards that I've made into that folder so that it will just continually update and you guys can save that folder for your own use. So I hope that that's a helpful resource for you and helps you study a bit and learn all of this information that we have to get in anatomy and physiology. A quick side note, if you are downloading those files, you will need to have the Anki app downloaded on your desktop or on your mobile device to access the files. They're a special file that is specific to Anki. I hope some of these tips were helpful for you. Thank you guys so much for being here and for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and like this video below and you can subscribe to my channel for more content similar to this. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.